jury selection beginning today for former President Trump's campaign finance trial in New York City. This makes him the first American president in history to stand trial on criminal charges. After today's hearing, Trump said he will have to miss his son's graduation because of the ongoing litigation. I was looking forward for years to have graduation with his mother and father there. And it looks like the judges are going to allow me to escape this scam. It's a scam trial. If you read all of the legal pundits, all of the legal scholars today, there's not one that I see that said this is a case that should be brought or tried. Scores of people have been called into the courtroom to begin the process of finding 12 jurors and six alternates. The lengthy procedure could take up to two weeks as the judge has to dig through a large pool of candidates. Judge Juan Marchand today calling the juror questionnaire by far the most exhaustive one the court has ever used. He wrapped up the day with nine potential jurors questioned. Trump is accused of falsifying business records to conceal payments to an adult film actress in the lead up to the 2016 election. The former president and GOP presidential frontrunner has denied any wrongdoing and pleaded not guilty to all charges. And joining me now to analyze these legal challenges and implications of the case is personal injury attorney Nima Ramani, president and co-founder of West Coast Trial Lawyers. Nima, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course, uh, jury selection beginning today in Trump's uh, trial there in New York. How difficult will it be to find jurors and alternates that don't have any bias on either side of this case? And, and sort of talk to us about this process. How much strategy goes into selecting a jury on both sides? Well, today is a historic day, and we're talking about probably what will be the most politicized trial in American history. Everyone in the country has heard of Donald Trump and has a preconceived view of him. Some people think he is a criminal, a traitor, an insurrectionist. And others think he is an American hero who is being treated unfairly by our criminal justice system. So it's the job of the prosecution, the judge, and the defense to sort through all those jurors. And there's going to be hundreds of them over the course of the next week or so and find 12 that can be fair and impartial and decide this case solely based on the facts and the law in this case. To your point, Judge uh, Juan Marchand today ruling uh, that inf infamous Access Hollywood uh, video that, that everybody remembers uh, before the 2016 election cannot be shown to jurors, but said that prose prosecutors can use Trump's exact words from the video and an email related to the tape. How significant do you think that video to the merits of the case are over this alleged um, hush money? I don't think that video is necessary to prove the charges in this case. I mean, we're talking about hush money payments to former porn star Stormy Daniels and whether those payments were in furtherance of or to cover up another crime, whether it be a campaign finance violation or tax evasion. Because of course, under New York law, if it's just a false business record, that's a misdemeanor, it's not a felony. So to the extent that the former president said something inappropriate, grab him by the expletive, I don't think that necessarily proves any fact in this particular case. Talk to us about what ultimately got us to this point, specifically when it comes to uh, state law in New York that allows the Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, to convert a misdemeanor for falsifying business records into a felony in this case. What is the statute of limitations? How does that play into this whole uh, process? Well, there's two separate questions, and obviously each state's law is unique. And there in New York, uh, false business records, they're only a misdemeanor. In fact, there's a two-year statute of limitations now. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. But they can be pushed to a felony or become more serious if those false business records are in furtherance of or to cover up another crime. So you have this novel legal theory where the prosecution appears to be arguing that the business records covered up an unlawful campaign contribution to Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. So it's going to be interesting to see if jurors buy that argument. Now, another interesting thing about New York law is that the statute of limitations doesn't run while a criminal defendant is continuously residing out of the state. And of course, Trump won the presidency in 2016 and was not residing in New York. And that's why the statute did not run. 
Nima Ramani, really appreciate you joining us. Thanks for having me. And joining me now to assess the, how politics could ultimately have played into this criminal case and how the trial could affect Trump's presidential campaign, we have Republican strategist Jason Meister. Thanks for having me. Jason, great to have you. Um, I want to get your thoughts. Jury selection, obviously, we just spoke about for former President Trump's hush money uh, trial beginning today in New York. Given the fact that uh, the Manhattan DA there, Alvin Bragg, refused to prosecute this case until one of his prosecutors resigned, wrote a book about prosecuting Trump, and then his predecessor as well uh, at the Justice Department also declining to prosecute this case, does this tarnish the credibility of the charges, and how might this be addressed during the trial? Sure. It absolutely tarnishes the entire case. I mean, this is the weaponization of our criminal justice system. They took a dead misdemeanor with an expired statute of limitations, and they hit Donald Trump with 34 felonies. So he's being politically persecuted, okay, in the state of New York by a judge who donated to Joe Biden, whose daughter daughter's biggest client is Kamala Harris in a district that voted 90% for Joe Biden under a George Soros DA who ran on getting Trump over hush money payments for an affair where the other party has admitted in writing that it never happened. Let's be very clear. Donald Trump is not on trial. America the rule of law and our justice system is on trial. And if Donald Trump is not successful in defeating this in this kangaroo court, in my opinion, our constitu constitutional republic is over. Jason, you're from the greater New York City area. You're sitting in our Manhattan studio right now. So you kind of know how the city operates, the feel there. Uh, give us a sense as to whether or not you think Trump will ultimately be able to get an unbiased jury and a, and a fair trial in uh, the city of New York. Sure. I was actually down at the courthouse steps this morning with Trump supporters and protesters alike. Uh, there's no chance that Donald Trump will get a fair trial or a jury of his peers in a district that voted 90% for Joe Biden. And that's a fact. And, but the reality is that this is political rocket fuel for Donald Trump because this is un-American, unconstitutional, illegal lawfare. And Americans see right through this. They may not see right through it in the heart of New York, the heartland of this country. And they don't think it's acceptable under any circumstance to politically persecute a former president of the United States, especially over a uncharged misdemeanor with a expired statute of limitations, turning that into a felony. And to your point about, you know, whether or not he can get a fair trial, at, at the same time, you know, given the nature of the city, it, it is obviously, as, as you put it, uh, very uh, democratic leaning. Um, if you get into a situation where you do have one stubborn uh, juror there and the jury's deadlocked, uh, there tends to be a lot of pressure on that loan holdout that would be amplified based on, say, the repercussions of the case, the high profile nature of the case, potential threats, job security, family relationships, et cetera. Absolutely. There's going to be tremendous pressure coming on all these jurors uh, in this case in the court in the court system. But I think in the court of public opinion, I think Donald Trump will ultimately win this battle. Uh, even if he's convicted, uh, which would happen before the election, uh, I think this could go to the appeals court and get overturned or even to the Supreme Court. Uh, and Donald Trump will, I think, ultimately persevere. I hope he does, because, again, I think that America, the fabric of our nation is on the line here uh, and our rule of law. So we have to hope that that happens, um, but we'll see what happens. Jason, lastly, you said that uh, this is political uh, rocket fuel for his campaign. Um, how will this ultimately affect his campaign and the election up against the reality that he is facing, I think it's four years uh, in prison for each uh, count. Sure. Well, so if you've looked over the last couple of months, uh, every time they bring another indictment, Trump's poll numbers go up. Uh, I think the same thing happens here just on steroids, because this case is a criminal case. It's going to get tremendous media coverage. He's going to suck all of the oxygen out of the room, so to speak. Uh, and there's going to be no coverage of any other candidate or 
or Joe Biden or all the, the massive problems that we have in this country right now, uh, which there are many of them. Um, but I think that it's going to just take out all the oxygen in the room and all the focus is going to be on Donald Trump and on these, uh, these prosecutions and the fact that this is a left-leaning judge with a left-leaning daughter who, has, who ultimately has a stake in this. And so I think that that's why I think it will be ultimately, you know, political rocket fuel for Donald Trump. Jason, to your point, he certainly drained a lot of oxygen out of uh, Iran's attacking uh, Israel over the weekend. Uh, to your point being validated right there. Jason Meister, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.